Welcome to this quick ball python care guide. Now the minimum size tank that you're going to want is the length of the snake so that your ball python can stretch out. Females average out at around four foot, males sort of three foot, so a four by two by two is a good bet. I've worked in reptile stores for years and I've always sold babies straight into a four foot as long as you pack out that enclosure and make it really cluttered for them to feel secure and they do quite well. My friend recently, he owns a shop, he also sold a baby straight into a five foot. So it is possible to go straight into a four foot with a baby bull python. Again, the key to making them feel secure is packing that in and making it a big environment, but a densely packed environment, like a log pile or a leaf pile, just really, really densely packed. You can go bigger for adults. In fact, I, I please do. Mine's in a seven foot, my local zoo has them in a 23 foot and all of them eat and breed in that enclosure just fine. You can buy your 4x2x2 two two for as little as $299. Now I've graphed out monthly temperatures from the wilds of Africa from data going back all the way back to 1985. Here you can see a full year. This is done in Celsius but I'll put a Fahrenheit conversion next to it. The dip in the year is the wet season. Remember because these countries are close to the equator these are only air temperatures and they're very constant. So what I would do is recommend an ambient air temperature of 23 or 73 Fahrenheit all the way up to 27 Celsius or 80.6 Fahrenheit. Anywhere sort of between those values would be acceptable. It naturally ebbs and flows within those boundaries in my own enclosure. And what you'll see is your bull python bask more or less based on the ambient temperature in the enclosure and how warm it was the night before as well. Like I say, there is room for wiggle room. Bull pythons can either bask in the sun or press themselves against the warmed object. So if you're going for a really basic level, you can provide them with an under tank heater or a heat mat and set that to around 31 degrees Celsius, which is around 87.8 Fahrenheit. But it's much better to give them a heat lamp from above because it's more natural like the sun. The type of infrared that these bulbs actually give off is very similar to the sun in itself and it has loads of properties to do with healing and a whole range of other health benefits, whereas the heat mat just warms them up and allows them to get on with their day but it doesn't have all the health properties of a heat lamp. So go with a heat lamp if you can. In the wild, bull pythons are found to curl up and bask at the mouth of their burrows, warm up and then take that warmth back to their eggs. And even when they're not on eggs, they'll use that sun to basically thermoregulate. So you can place a hide near your heat lamp and allow that to kind of happen in your enclosure. You want the surface temperature of your basking area to be within the bounds of sort of like 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, which is 86 Fahrenheit to 95. Within those boundaries is like the safe levels and then they can just comfortably sit there and allow like the infrared to go into their back. If we look at this graph from a study of 35 bull pythons in 4x2x2 by two by two terrariums, we can see that the most of their activity happened between the hours hours of 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. with some basking to warm up happening in the day. Of course, I recommend that all heat sources be guarded and controlled by a thermostat. Now, yes, bull pythons can survive without UV, but it's so much better to give it to them. It helps with their immune system and stress response and a whole other bucket load of health benefits. In a study where they gave them a basking spot, when they took UV away, the bull pythons basked significantly less, showing that that UV was something that they valued quite a lot. So if they really value it, why wouldn't we give it to them? My personal rule is I won't keep a snake without UV, but there's my recommendation. I would give them a low strength UV, one third to one half the enclosure in length, that leaves one side the nice little sh sunny patch and the other in shade. Much more natural, just like the wild, they can move into a sunny patch or go retreat to the shade. So we know we want to make a little sunny patch, but how long do we leave these lights on for? Well, I mapped out the day lengths of Africa for you too. For the most part, a 12 hour day suits just fine. And if you want to add in an extra half an hour in the longer months, you can. At night, just turn everything off for that day night cycle. And you can use mechanical timer plugs at the wall to do just that. At night, we do want the temperatures to naturally cool. That being said, temperatures at night in Western Africa don't really drop below 20 and that's 70 Fahrenheit. So I'd recommend those as your minimum viable nighttime temperatures. They can go much lower and survive, but let's keep them at a comfortable temperature is what I'd say. What you'll find is your heat lamps have warmed all the decor and the decorations throughout the day and they will now be giving off residual heat. So you might get those nighttime temperatures as a side effect of that. If not, and you're keeping your tank in a cooler environment, 
then you want to provide them with some nighttime heat and a non-light emitting heat source, obviously on a thermostat, and just set that to that 20 degrees or 70 Fahrenheit. Where ball pythons come from, it's very humid. In fact, if you look at this chart, it doesn't really drop below the 50%. And then it even peaks during the wet season. So to maintain this, I recommend spraying your enclosure. This adds moisture to the soil that when heated, causes that moisture and water to evaporate and increase the relative humidity in the air of your enclosure. Routine spraying like that also simulates the rainfall that they would experience in the wild. As a whole, I'd recommend keeping your tank around 60 to 80% humidity. Again, there's a whole load of wiggle room in the wild that burrows might be upwards of 100% humidity and it will naturally rise and fall and be lower around the basking spot. As long as your ball python can move in and out of areas of high humidity, you'll be just fine. A large water bowl is great for allowing that big surface area of water to evaporate and add to the humidity, but also allows your snake to curl up and help during shedding time. It's really important to refresh that water almost daily so that snake can hydrate as much as they want. That's really important when it comes to shedding. Hydration for them is absolute key. I feed my bull python a nice varied diet, swapping between prey items every other feed. Generally, you want to feed your snake a prey item that's the width of the widest part of their body. 10 to 15% of the total bull python's weight as a prey item is a good sort of ballpark to stick with. Now, if it's a juvenile bull python that's less than 200 grams, I would recommend feeding it once every five to seven days. From sort of there to sub-adulthood, I recommend feeding every two to three weeks, and then moving to three weeks progressively with size. For an adult bull python, I recommend feeding them once a month as a baseline, and then on particular months where things temperatures are really rising and their metabolism is ramping up and they're getting a little bit hungry, you can feed them twice in that month. And you may find that in the winter months, they go off feeding entirely. So on average, you might average around 12 feeds a year, but when they don't feed, don't worry about it. As long as they're not losing a lot of weight and no more than 10% of their total body weight, you'll be fine. This sounds like so little, but these animals have such slow metabolisms. This is what they were designed for. If you feed them too much, it causes a lot of stress on their organs. Like I said, they can go off food routinely as part of their yearly habit, but there are other things that can cause them to go off feed as well. There might be something stressing them in their environment. You might have a dog walking past their enclosure that they don't like. Their parameters in their enclosure could be off. It might be that time of year where the males are thinking about other things, if you catch my drift. Or you could just be handling too much. For substrate, you want something absorbent to absorb that moisture and then release it as humidity when it's warmed. Something that doesn't mold when wet. These can be cocoa fiber compressed blocks that you hydrate and they expand and release and you use it as a substrate. This can be topsoils and sands. This can be bark, cypress mulches. All pythons love to climb and it's so good for their body condition. You can totally feel the difference between a really pudgy bull python and one that has exercise and it's like a muscle. When I got my bull python, she was a bit pudgy, but since she's been in a big enclosure and had lots of opportunity to climb, the muscle tone on that animal has greatly increased. So give them those branches they can climb, just give them security along their entire gradient, make sure it's jam packed in there with a little bit of space that they can move in as well, and you'll be doing just golden. I'll be making many more bull python videos, so if you like the detail in this one and you want to see more, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.